Right, for uh, vectors in three dimensions, because two dimensions just wasn't fun enough, <clears throat> let's try a third one. Uh, we need three axes, and those are normally defined as x, y, and z, as you could probably guess, and they're all perpendicular to each other. And therefore, we also need three unit vectors. Uh, we just go on with the alphabet. I and J are the unit vectors for the X and Y direction, and so K is the um, unit vector with a little hat on it for the um, Z direction. One difference that we have to keep in mind, though, is that in when working with vectors in physics, traditionally X and Y are considered coordinates in the horizontal plane, whereas Z is considered up and down. We're used to thinking, uh, you know, looking at a graph so that y is going up and down because we're most accustomed to using um, two-dimensional uh, coordinate systems rather than three. But in the three-dimensional coordinate systems, x and y are horizontal and z is perpendicular or vertical. <clears throat> if you have a vector, which you could call a in three-dimensional space, the components of that vector are defined uh, pretty much the way they are for two-dimensional, except there's a third one. So the x component of vector A would be the magnitude of the x component times the unit vector for x, which is i with a hat. <clears throat> the y component for vector A would be um, defined as the magnitude of the y component times the unit vector for the y direction which is J. And for the Z direction, the vector component would be defined as the uh, magnitude of the Z component of the vector times the unit vector in the Z direction, which of course is K. So we have three of those now instead of two. As before though, the, the overall vector is just the resultant of the uh, components in the various directions. Now, instead of just the x and y directions, it's the x and the y and the z components that add up to give the overall vector. So vector A would just be the x, y, and z components, or ax times i plus magnitude ay times j plus magnitude az times k. And that would be a way of defining vector A. If Hypothetically, you have coordinates of some initial point, which we'll call maybe B, and those component those um, coordinates can be given as X original, Y original, and Z original. And there's also an ending point for the vector or final point, and we'll call that point F. And um, the coordinates for that would be X final, Y final, and Z final. Then the magnitude of the X component for vector A is just x final minus x original, pretty much like it has been so far. Same with the y component. The z component, same idea. The, the magnitude of the z component for vector a in this case would be just z final minus z original for the, the two points, the, the original and final points. The magnitude of vector a would be given again by the Pythagorean theorem. And you might think that it would work differently with three dimensions, but actually it doesn't, because when you're working with three dimensions, you're basically using the Pythagorean theorem twice. And when you bring together, uh, there is a diagram on uh, page 67 that shows you how to do that, um, if you really care. <laughs> but the, basically you end up using the Pythagorean theorem twice, you find the length of a face diagonal and then you find the um, diagonal of basically what is the body diagonal of the cube, and that's your vector. And, and, it, and what it amounts to is the square root of ax squared plus ay squared plus az squared. So it's the same Pythagorean theorem we've been using. You just throw in the z term also and be sure to square it. An example of uh, using three-dimensional coordinates is, um, given in the book as an example of a drone and its position versus the control tower. Its initial position is 100 meters above ground, 
And notice it says above ground. It doesn't say above the control tower. That might be a source of some confusion in this question because if you're thinking of the control tower as being the origin, you're probably thinking of the spot where the traffic air traffic controllers actually sit, which is the top of the control tower. And that would actually matter if you're measuring vertical distances, which we are now because we've got a Z coordinate. So notice it says above ground, not above the control tower. <clears throat> um, 300 meters east and 200 meters north. So you've basically got your um, X coordinate, your Y coordinate, and your Z coordinate. That's what these really are. Okay, the Z doesn't really look like a Z. Okay, how about that? One minute later, the drone is at a different position, 250 meters above ground. So there's your new Z coordinate. In fact, I'm even going to call this Z final. And that was Z original, and this was X original, and this was Y original. Uh, 1,200 meters east, east-west is the X direction, so that's X final, and 2,100 meters north, that's Y final. What is the magnitude of the displacement vector? That's the question. Okay, the solution. First of all, you need to decide where the origin is. And so the control tower is going to be the origin, but we're going to use the, the base of the control tower, that is the ground level of the control tower as the origin. And you'd also want to define your direction. So east is the positive x direction. And that is where the unit vector would be I. North is the positive Y direction, where the unit vector would be J. And any references to above refers to the positive Z direction, where the unit vector is K. And below would be a negative Z direction, but <clears throat> drones are for flying, not for digging, so uh, we're not likely to use the negative Z direction here. Okay, so the original position of the vector, or of the drone, is the origin of the vector. And the final position is, of course, the end of the vector. OK, so the origin would have coordinates 300 meters north, that's x, 200 meter, or, sorry, 300 meters east, that's x, 200 meters north, that's y and 100 meters above ground, that's Z. And the end would be where the drone ends up. That would be 1,200 meters east, that's X, 2,100 meters north, that's Y, and 250 meters above ground, that's Z. Uh, it's at this point I should point out that these two numbers I'm underlining here, somehow the book, man, the example in the book gets those numbers wrong. Uh, clearly in the problem, these are 1,200 and 2,100. I don't know where they got the numbers that they give at this point in the book as those two coordinates. So watch out for that. I'm going to circle them just to, just to point it out. I went back and read that like three times just to make sure. And yeah, the book is definitely wrong on that. So the magnitude of the vector components
if we're going to call our vector d, then dx, that is the magnitude of the x component of the vector. And so remember, there's no arrow because we're talking about magnitude of the components. So it's dx is just x final minus x initial or original. That's 1,200 minus 300 meters, and that's 900 meters. dy, that is the magnitude of the y component of the vector, is just y final minus y original, and that's 2100 minus 200 meters, and that is 1900 meters. And dz is just z final minus z original, and that's 250 minus 100 meters, which is 150 meters. So the overall vector is going to be the x component of the vector plus the y component of the vector plus the z component of the vector. And the x component of the vector is just the magnitude of the x component times the unit vector in the x direction. The y component of the vector is just the magnitude of the y component times the unit vector in the y direction. And the z component of the vector is just the magnitude of the z component times the unit vector in the z direction. And so what this is, is 900i plus 1900j plus 150k meters. So that is your vector. The magnitude of the vector is again from the Pythagorean theorem. The x component squared plus the y component squared plus the z component squared. So that's nine square root of 900 square plus 1900 squared plus 150 squared, that is square root of, what is it, 4 million, 442,500. But the important part is that comes out to 2,108 meters. This number of the book also got wrong. I checked this and checked it and rechecked it. It is 2,108. I forget what the book says, but yeah, it's wrong. Okay, so that is the magnitude of the vector. That's how far the drone ends up away from the control tower in a straight line. Okay. All right. Hopefully that's all right. Next, we come finally to section 2.3. which is on the algebra of vectors and you know we know already that vectors can be multiplied by scalars we've been doing that uh, the addition of vectors is associative
So in other words, um, if A is a scalar, then A times vector A plus A times vector B can also be written as A times the sum of vector A plus vector B. Same thing. If you want to change the direction of a vector, In other words, if you want the vector to point in exactly the opposite direction it originally did, 180 degrees away from what it originally did, in other words, if you want it to be anti-parallel to itself, then what you do is you multiply it by negative 1. Because multiplying it by negative 1 changes the sign, and when working with vectors, the sign is not about magnitude, it's about direction. Okay, so if you multiply the vector a by negative one, it's the same as mul multiplying all of its components by negative one. So that would be negative uh, the magnitude of the x component times i, negative the magnitude of the y component times j, and negative the magnitude of the z component times k. or this, basically. <clears throat> An example that shows this is about the direction of motion. Uh, example 2.8. And here we have I being the unit vector due east. Or in other words, the positive x direction. Oh, sorry, j. Would be the unit vector due north. That's the positive y direction. And k would be the unit vector straight up, or the positive z direction. <clears throat> and that can also be considered, uh, if you're dealing with the Earth, altitude above sea level. Direction straight up would be the altitude, right? And the actual question is, uh, say a military convoy is moving through a territory with a velocity that can be given by a vector. Velocity is a vector, so we can use vector notation to indicate the velocity. The velocity is 4.0i plus 3.0j plus 0.1k kilometers per hour. 
and the 0.1 kilometers per hour for Z, or for the, sorry, the, yeah, the 0.1 kilometers per hour is the magnitude for the Z direction. And what that means is that um, the convoy is ascending as it goes. The positive, the fact that it has a positive number for the Z coordinate means that it's going higher and higher over time. So they're like going up a hill. If, however, they find the way blocked, maybe there's been a rock slide or something, and they have to go back and retrace their steps over the same route, basically just turn around and head back the way they came from, what would the geographic direction be that they're going in? Okay, for the solution, <clears throat> again, the fact uh, the fact that there's a positive number for the Z component, it just means that they're climbing upward. as they go along, or ascending, in other words. The movement along the ground is four kilometers per hour to the east. That is the positive x direction. And three kilometers per hour north. positive y direction. So the direction on the ground would be inverse tangent of y over x, y being north and x being east. So that's uh, tan minus one, three over four. And that's 36.9 degrees. The way we normally look at these things, that would be 36.9 degrees north of east. Okay, so something like that. In retreat, the new velocity vector uh, which we'll call what we'll calls it u, I'm going to call it v sub r for v retreat uh, um, is anti-parallel. to the original velocity vector. Or in other words, the retreat vector is equal to negative A times the original vector. With A being some positive number. But notice the negative sign because you're going in the opposite direction. So the velocity of retreat is A times negative 4.0i plus negative 3.0j plus negative 0.1k. 
kilometers per hour. And uh, you can simplify that a little bit to A times negative 4.0 I minus 3.0 J minus 0.1 K kilometers per hour. And the direction of the retreat will be inverse tangent <clears throat> of negative 3a over negative 4a. A is in there uh, basically just in case they're not retreating at the same uh, speed. You could say if they retreat twice as fast, then A would be 2. And you'd multiply each of these numbers by 2. <clears throat> and so on. So that's why we're putting the A in there. If you're assuming that they're retreating at the same speed that they were going forward, then A would be one and you could just drop it. Okay, the, the um, The angle comes out to be the same, but of course it has to be in the opposite direction. So in other words, it's 36.9 degrees south of west. And the way we usually uh, measure directions, south of west would be Oops, sorry. This direction here, which of course is opposite the original direction, which was north of east, south of west. If it's this uh, right here is 36.9 plus this, which is 180, then 180 plus 36.9. would give us 216.9. That would be another way of putting it. 216.9 degrees according to the direction that we normally measure things. OK, so that's, uh, that's a handy view of that. The next topic is the null vector. Uh, basically, a null vector is when a vector is multiplied by zero, and it becomes nothing because anything times zero is zero. Um, and then we have the concept of equal vectors. Uh, basically, equal vectors are uh, vectors that have the same magnitude, but they head in opposite directions. Um, so that when you add them together, you get a null vector, in other words, zero. Uh, so what we just saw here, assuming that they were retreating at the same speed they were advancing, uh, the sum total of the advancing vector and the retreating vector would be a null vector or zero, because they were going one way at a certain speed, and if they turn around and head in exactly the opposite way at the same speed, then those vectors would cancel each other out, and you would end up with nothing which is technically referred to as the null vector. That's uh, coming up next. Right now, I guess we've used up our time for this lecture. So that'll give us a place to start next time. Okay, so I'll see you then.